Dolby Vision 2. Wait, hold on a second. Dolby Vision 2. Isn't Dolby Vision still kind of new? No, Caleb, you fart. Dolby Vision made its first appearance in a consumer TV in, y'all ready for this? 2015, 10 years ago, one decade. Happy birthday, Dolby Vision. Anyone else feeling their age just a little bit? No, just me? All right, well, anyway, it's been about a decade. So about time for a Dolby Vision 2, if you're a marketing guru, right? But is that all this is? Is Dolby Vision 2 a marketing move? Something to reinvigorate the brand? Or is it really more than that? Do you need Dolby Vision 2 in your next TV? Did you just get ripped off if you bought a TV with the old crusty Dolby Vision in it? Does anyone really need to care about this? Will this finally be the moment that Samsung <laughs> decides to snuggle up to Dolby? Well, I'm about to answer all of those questions for you. So stick around. Oh, we don't have mid-roll graphics. We have to fix that. Well, roll the logo or something. Welcome back everyone. I'm Caleb Dennison and this is Caleb Rated. Okay, so let's start with what Dolby says Dolby Vision 2 has to offer and then we'll break down each of the bullet points. And by the way, if you're worried I'm gonna lose you in some technical weeds, don't. My whole thing is keeping this understandable for everyone and more importantly, explaining why you should or should not care. So Dolby says that Dolby Vision 2 is the next evolution of Dolby Vision, which Dolby has always seen as being more than just HDR. Now Dolby Vision 2 is now powered by a new Dolby Image engine that is supposed to be designed to unlock the full potential of today's TVs. And it introduces adaptive intelligence that fine tunes the picture to the content and the viewing environment, adds tools for creators to better preserve their intent across different displays, and debuts new features like precision black for dark scene detail, light sense for room aware brightness, and even advanced motion control in the Dolby Vision 2 Max tier. In short, Dolby positions this as a smarter, more dynamic HDR system that raises the bar for both everyday viewers and high-end enthusiasts. Y'all get all that? <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks didn't, including folks who are supposed to be experts that explain things to people. In fact, some folks that I've talked to have even accused Dolby Vision 2 or parts of it as being just a repackaged version of the Dolby Vision IQ feature that's already found in many TVs that folks have in their homes right now. That, my friends, is not an accurate characterization. And let me be clear about something here. I don't, I don't have any skin in Dolby's game, okay? My only interest is helping you understand what's what so it's easier to understand, research, and buy TVs. It's also gonna help you understand the stuff that I mentioned in future videos, which again, are designed to help you understand, research, and buy TVs. Okay, so there are two things that I need you to understand before I go ahead and break down each component of Dolby Vision 2 for you. First is, Dolby Vision 2 is as much about the awesome new toolbox that it gives creators as it is what new TVs will be able to do for us. See, Dolby Vision 2 makes it possible for content creators to be very specific about telling a TV what to do, and it adapts those instructions based on the capabilities of the TV. It then delivers these instructions through enhanced and increased metadata. That's just a little informational signal that hitchhikes along with the picture and sound information that comes in from your streaming service or via your HDMI cable. So Dolby Vision 2 gives creators this awesome new toolbox with a whole lot of control over what's coming out the other end of your TV. Then on the TV side itself, Dolby Vision 2 technology in the TV will read and execute those instructions based on what it knows about your TV. Now, I'll explain how this benefits you in a moment. You know, another myth that I want to bust is that Dolby Vision 2 is just a ploy to integrate AI into Dolby's brand. I mean, Samsung, LG, TCL, Hisense, Roku even, all of them are spouting forth about the AI in their picture processors, naturally. Dolby just wants you to know it has AI stuff in your TV too, right? Wrong. 
Dolby told me that Dolby Vision 2 employs AI on the production side to help artists make their workflows more efficient. For example, AI is used to detect shots where judder may be significant, and that allows the creative the opportunity to review the shot and decide whether or not and, and how much to use Dolby's new authentic motion feature. But Dolby Vision 2 doesn't use AI on the TV side, okay? So AI isn't there to make Dolby seem relevant in a sea of others that are abusing the AI term to absolute death. You see what happens when you ask questions instead of making assumptions? You learn stuff, it's good times. Okay, so here's that point by point breakdown that I've been promising. Dolby bundles three features under what it calls content intelligence. Okay, here is where the use of the word intelligence kind of seems like it was employed to make things sound super smart. But the truth is, the three things I'm gonna talk about are all about making intelligent decisions on how to display content so it looks better and you enjoy it more. In some cases, it will prevent a lot of frustration that folks have been complaining about with HDR content, which is why I'm kind of stoked about it. So the first of this trio is Precision Black, which will let creators put new metadata into the video signal, which is later used in the home to bring more shadow detail to the images, no matter what the TV's capabilities are and what the ambient light situation is. So maybe you've got an OLED with perfect deep black levels, but it tends to crush low level blacks or maybe even raise them up when it shouldn't. Well, Dolby Vision 2 helps make sure you get the deep blacks you want without losing shadow detail. And if you have say an inexpensive TV with not a whole bunch of dimming zones, Dolby Vision 2 will make the image look as good as possible on that sort of TV too. So no lost shadow detail with precision black, almost no matter what kind of TV you have. The next feature, and the one I think that most people should be really excited about, is the light sense feature. You know some of those scenes and, you know, hell, entire episodes of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, the ones so dark that you can barely see what's going on even in a pitch black room? Well, the precision black feature in Dolby Vision 2 would have given those creators the opportunity to specify what should be done to the image if it were being played in a room with a bunch of lights turned on so that the image could end up still being visible but it's still gonna have the vibe that the creators were trying to give. So when you played that scene at home, the little light sensor in your TV would tell the Dolby Vision 2 tech in your TV that it was a certain brightness in the room. And then the Dolby Vision 2 tech would have the TV raise the average picture level a bit and adjust the tone mapping so you could better see the image. But it would still have the moody vibe and the deep blacks that came along with those scenes. Now, if this all works as described, that's gonna solve a major pain point for a whole lot of folks. And that is one of the more intelligent decisions I've seen made around TV in a while. Next up is kind of a no brainer and I honestly wish this is what TV manufacturers would do themselves, but it's called sports and gaming optimization and it's meant to make sports and games look awesome without the awful sports mode or lack of game mode in a TV. Folks, sports and video games are rarely meant to be enjoyed according to cinema standards. Sports are meant to have a cooler color temperature than what movies are to have. What I mean is, a sports arena at night is lit up by a bunch of very bright lights with a very cool color temperature. So your TV should be making the image look accurate according to what it looked like there at the arena with a lot of cool blue saturated white light. Not this warmer D65 color temperature that we calibrate to for movies. And the same goes for games. Rarely are they meant to have the same white balance as movies. Those are also meant to have a cooler color temperature. So Dolby Sports and Game Optimization makes sure that the colors and the motion are what they need to be for sports and games. Pure and simple. This is what needs to happen, folks. Now this next feature does get a little technical, but I got you. So it's called Bi-Directional Tone Mapping. And I'll admit, even I thought to myself, 
You know what, hold on. Hasn't Dolby Vision always had this bi-directional tone mapping thing? So I understand if others thought that it was just a clever rebranding. See, one of the things that has always made Dolby Vision, well, more desirable than other flavors of HDR is that it knew what your TV could and could not do. And it adjusted the contents bright and dark areas to look best on your TV. The bi-directional part of this though, is that content creators can now feed clever instructions into the signal as they use their fancy new tools in their editing suites. And that's gonna make this process of customizing the TV's picture uh, even more successful. Now, to be clear, I have not seen this in action, all right? I haven't seen any of it in action. I'm just trying to clarify what Dolby is claiming this stuff does and making the distinction between what Dolby Vision was and what Dolby Vision is now becoming with Dolby Vision 2. Okay, and the final feature, really the one that I think is gonna end up getting the most buzz in the end is the authentic motion feature. Guys, if this works as promised and early reports from IFA are that it is indeed awesome, then folks, there are going to be way fewer arguments in households on movie night. Trust me. See, folks tend to fall on one polar end of the motion spectrum or the other. Very few people fall into the middle. Either you hate Judder so much that you'd rather have an artificially smooth two-dimensional picture, or you hate motion smoothing so much that you'd rather just tolerate the Judder. Well, authentic motion will allow movie makers to decide when and how much motion smoothing is applied. Just enough to get rid of Judder, but not enough to make a movie look like a soap opera the whole time. So say a movie scene starts with a really slow right to left pan. These are notoriously profuse types of scenes in James Bond flicks. And that's where Judder tends to be really horrid. So maybe the creator would have the TV turn the motion smoothing up about halfway to keep the Judder from being a problem in that real slow pan scene. Now let's say we've come to a part in the movie where there's no camera movement and very little object movement. Maybe it's two people talking in a static scene or switching from A cam to B camera. You would want then to use zero motion smoothing. Well, Dolby Vision 2 lets the creator make that determination. And if you want it, you can use that so that you get motion smoothing when you need it and you don't when you don't. Guys, I'm here to tell you this could be really awesome. The only unfortunate thing is that when it first comes out, this feature will only be available on top tier TVs. And I have to assume that's because it requires more processing horsepower. And that brings me to my next, next point, which is that it's gonna take time for all of this to roll out. Look, in the end, Dolby is making the tools and delivering them in a really handy, super fancy toolbox. But it's up to the creators to pick up those tools and use them. And then on the TV side, it's up to the TV brands to integrate the hardware into their TVs. That's part of why we'll see this in the most expensive models first. And all that assumes that creators and TV makers get on board. If they don't, this Dolby Vision 2 could fall flat on its very smart face. Let's just hope that's not what ends up happening. Remember, since Dolby Vision 2 is backward compatible, basically, your TV will just ignore the extra metadata if it ever sees a Dolby Vision 2 stream. So there's no worry about getting left behind with your current TV. Oh, side note, I'm not convinced Samsung is gonna climb aboard the Dolby Vision 2 train. I just, I wouldn't get my hopes up there. But if there ever was a time to reconsider, now would probably be it. So do not be upset if you just bought a new TV Dolby Vision 2 will take time to roll out on both the creation and the display side of things. And by then, you may be looking to get a new TV anyway. Remember, when Dolby Vision first came out, you could only get it on a couple of Vizio TVs and then a couple of LG TVs. And the only Dolby Vision content you could watch back then was Marco Polo on Netflix. But then Dolby Vision started trickling out and then came the downpour. The next thing you know, it's everywhere. Point is, it usually does start as a drip. 
And that's where we'll be in 2026, the drip phase. Maybe Dolby Vision 2 trickles in 2027. Maybe it starts gushing a little bit more. We'll see. I know what I'm hoping for, but what about you? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Hey, do the like, comment, and subscribe thing. I need it to keep doing this work. I'll see you on the next video. And remember, before you buy it, ask yourself, what would Caleb rate it?